want to make sure that through the Justice Center, those who cannot afford a lawyer nonetheless get a lawyer to help them enforce their rights. The legal community owes an obligation not only to work for paying clients, but to see the people who are in need really have their rights enforced. I don't think there's anything more satisfying than to know that you have not only made a difference in their lives, but you've enabled them in many situations to actually survive. The New York City Bar and the Justice Center have an extraordinarily complementary relationship and is a great force for change. The City Bar does great policy work and the Justice Center is on the ground doing service to clients informing the decisions of the City Bar. Immigration is probably the best example. The consequences of removal or being forced to leave the United States, being ultimately deported are every bit as severe as the um, consequences of um, uh, criminal um, conviction, uh, wherein someone could serve some amount of time in jail and then uh, resume a normal life. One of the issues that we've gotten involved with this season is the Varick Street Detention Center. We received a petition from 100 people who'd been detained there, which came to us a year ago. They had a series of very serious uh, conditions that they alleged in the petition. And we decided that we would put together a team of attorneys to go in and figure out both what was going on inside and provide legal counsel to people. A lawyer can make an enormous difference in representing a detained alien by being able to recognize the potential relief from removal that that person has. We really didn't know what we would find when we were gathering the data, but we looked at a cohort of cases from December through July and had about 154 interviews that we ran the data on. And that's when the sort of finding that 39% of people probably had a legal claim if they had a lawyer jumped out at us. The result of issuing the report is that the New York Times got very interested in doing a story and worked very hard with us. after the horrible devastation in Haiti. Our immigration committee pushed for a temporary protective status for the Haitians who were in this country and undocumented. At the same time, the Justice Center stepped forward, got pro bono lawyers to represent those people for staying in this country. Myself, along with another Haitian lawyer, we called churches, we called radio stations, we reached out to um, Dr. Matthew Eugene, who's a council member uh, in Brooklyn. We reached out to the consulate's office, we reached out to so many people just sending emails. We used all uh, communication outlets possible in order to bring it out there. You think about the things that are appearing in your paper, the issues of our time, and we're trying to address those needs. The City Bar Justice Center and the private bar are able to work together on a scale that really makes a difference. It's a rush, you know, to feel engaged with a, a purpose which you can understand and with an outcome which you can understand. To get involved in pro bono work, like, you you have ownership of what you're doing. You see, your, you see the project through from beginning to end. If you can, you know, seek out the Justice Center, they have professionals that do this for a living, you know, so it's like you're going into a fight and now the fight just, just got a little bit more even. Thank you, Justice Center, for helping us uh, make our dream of starting a business a reality. These type of people that I've met, they just have something different about them. I don't know if it's passion or whatever it is, but it's something that connects with me.